Good morning, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. It's 9.34 a.m. here my time. Very quickly, I want to um, say thank you to those of you, my brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God, who have prayed for me um, because of my health problems that have arose here recently. Um, thank you for all of you who have kept me in prayer. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, also, very quickly, um, if you want to get a hold of me personally, um, I, I get all your comments. I see all your comments. But if there's something you wish to converse with me about, um, there is an email here on this uh, channel. Go ahead and shoot an email, if you will. And um, that's going to be it for that, pretty much. But I just want to say thank you to all of you who have prayed for me with uh, my health problems that have arose. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, in that he feared, what is this? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to the book of Hebrews, chapter 5. We're going to begin here with just one verse, okay? Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Verse 7. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. You are expected to follow me along, okay? Who, in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared, was heard in that he feared, he feared. Who is this talking about? Now let's read this entire chapter, okay? Now let's read, like I said, Hebrews chapter 5 in its entirety. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins, who can have compassion on the ignorant, and on them that are out of the way. Oh, beg your pardon. For that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof, he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And of course, Melchizedek. Melchizedek is Jesus Christ, okay, in the Old Testament, okay, as they say, a precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ was Melchizedek, okay. Uh, Brother Brian did a wonderful video on that, which is located in the playlist on this channel about who is God, okay, go ahead and look for that, but Melchizedek is Jesus Christ, okay, okay, so let's continue. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared. So this is talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is our Lord Jesus Christ? God our Father. God our Father. Let's, let's finish this chapter, okay? 
Though he were a son, that's capital S, by the way, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Hmm. Let's continue. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Now, very quickly, we have to remember that the book of Hebrews is written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? All right. Yes, there are things in here for our instruction and in righteousness for today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. And yes, there are things that cross dispensational lines within the book of Hebrews. But the book of Hebrews is more so for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? You have to remember that. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> for when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Okay? Now, looking at verse 7 now. This is talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at verse 7 and 8 again. Okay? Who in the days of, of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears, unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Let's keep reading. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now, Trinitarians will, like, will take this and twist this into their three persons making one God. Again, if you have any questions about that, check out the playlist about who is God, okay? Go ahead and check that out, okay? God consists of three parts, as do we. We are not gods, but we as man are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. Okay, God has a spirit, soul, and body. It's called the Godhead, okay? Spirit, soul, and body, okay? The spirit is the Holy Ghost. God the Father is the soul. The body, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And if you look within the scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ clearly referred to himself as God the Father. And on that very quickly... Go to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. We have to address these things before uh, going on, okay? We have to address these things. So please bear with us. Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. Just one verse, okay? And Abraham said, my son, Abraham was talking to his son Isaac. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Okay? Himself. Okay? There is only one God. Okay? Not three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body that make one God. That is heresy. That is satanic. And that is what Catholicism teaches, and that has bled into what people call Christianity. Okay? Okay? Well, you're with me so far? But it says, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Himself. Okay? Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Okay? We're covering the basics here first. Okay? 
Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 on to verse 19. Okay? Verses 15 on to verse 19. Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 on to verse 19. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Okay, talking about Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? And now let's go to 1 Timothy. Again, you can read in the book of John, chapters 14 and 15, okay? Uh, chapter 16, okay? In John, our Lord Jesus Christ clearly identifies himself as the Father. Before Abraham was, I am. Our Lord Jesus Christ called himself the Father because he is. Jesus Christ is God the Father, okay? You can also read Isaiah chapter 9, okay? You go ahead and read that whole chapter on your own time when you have the time, okay? But we have to remember this, okay? We have to remember this. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, okay? Just one verse. 1 Timothy 3. Uh, 1 Timothy 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of, a, uh, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Okay? God was manifest in the flesh. 1 John 4, 1 John 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. I have addressed before in a video, an expository video, uh, from verses 1 on to verse 6, explaining the context of 1 John 4, verses 1 on to verse 6, okay? You merely saying words does not prove that you are of the church of the living God. Okay, the context is talking about those who speak the word. Okay, the word, the scriptures. Okay, uh, there, I've, that has been addressed in another video. But, beloved, 1 John 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets right there, are gone out into the world. Hereby ye know the Spirit of God. And this is tied into false prophets, okay? Again, I'm not going to get on off on that. I have already addressed that, okay? Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, is his present, is his present, Okay? And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, those of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, which is the ground and pillar of truth. <clears throat> Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. 
Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. God will provide himself a burnt offering. Himself for a burnt offering. Okay? Thank you, pardon for um, botching that. The point is that we are getting that. Jesus Christ is God the Father. So then the question that comes up about Hebrews chapter 5, specifically verse 7, okay? Let's look at Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared. So, God the Father feared? Wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what, what is this? Go to Deuteronomy. Go to Deuteronomy. I want to show you something. Obviously, God has nothing to be afraid of. Right? What does God have to be afraid of? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 26 on to verse 31. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 26 on to verse 31. I said, I would scatter them into corners. Now he's talking about the Jewish people scattering them across the face of the earth. Okay, also uh, referred to as the diaspora, spread out, okay? For example, there are Jews in Iceland. There are Jews in Australia. There are Jews in Canada. There are Jews in Japan, okay? There are Jews in Outer Mongolia, okay? There are Jews near you, okay? Whether you may know of them or not, spread them out, see? Okay. I said I would scatter, uh, picking up at verse 26 again, I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Look at verse 27 there. Make your pardon. Look at verse 27. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversary should, have, should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How could one, chase a thousand, and two put ten thousand to flight, except their capital R, Rock, had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up. See, Rock, capital R, and Lord, okay? One God, okay? Let's continue. For their Rock, lowercase r, is not as R, capital R, Rock. Even our enemies themselves, even our enemies themselves being judges. Look at verse 27. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy. Hold your place here and go to Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. You know, um, I thought that the, that was it for, this, uh, for the notes for this. And this morning in reading the scriptures... The Lord gave me another thing to add on to this. <laughs> uh, you know, when preparing videos, you don't have a set, your heart set on everything that the Lord will give on to you because he can take away and add to it whenever he wants if the Lord is the one who is truly guiding you. There are very few of you who know what I mean. So, Isaiah chapter 10, verses 13 and on to verse 15. Isaiah chapter 10, verses 13 on to verse 15. 
For he saith, By the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent, and I have removed the bonds of the people, and have robbed their treasures, and have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. And my hand hath found as a nest the riches of the people, and as one gathereth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth. And there was none that moved the wing, or opened the mouth, or peeped. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as if or as if the staff should lift up itself, as if it were no wood. And when you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 32, <clears throat> verse 30, How should one chase a thousand, and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock, capital R, had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? When looking at verse 27, it says, Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. Perfect example. The Catholic Eustachy in Croatia in World War II. The Eustachy. The Eustachy, the Catholic Eustachy, were so brutal, so vicious, so vile, that the Eustachy even made the Nazis say, uh, wow, you, you, you guys are pretty intense. And of course, the Catholic Eustachy were of the devil themselves. Obviously, because Catholicism is Satan's church, okay? And on that as well, the Holocaust, the Holocaust of the Jew, okay? The Holocaust, I wholeheartedly believe, was God's judgment upon the apple of his eye, okay? And I have a three-part video on the Holocaust, okay? Going through lots of scriptures, Go ahead and look that up on your own time if you are interested. But see, it says here in verse 27, were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy. Again, the Catholic Eustachy. They, the Eustachy, made the Nazis, like I said, like, oh, wow, you, you guys are, <laughs> you guys are pretty intense. You see? Because remember, brethren, God has given us free will. You can choose either to love the Lord and believe on him and trust on him for what he has done for you or believe in yourself. See? So right here, verse 27, is one of the times where it says that our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, feared something other than what is said in the book of Hebrews. And it's the wrath of the enemy. That they would behave, what does it say? Lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely. Again, the Catholic Eustachy. Taking off ears and eyes and making necklaces out of them. Um, I, I do not have that book, the uh, Vatican Holocaust book. Brother Brian Denlinger did a video, a two-parter on that, which was very good. Um, personally, I wouldn't mind having that book to read that, but I mean, the documentation of how brutal the Eustachy were onto the apple of his eye. But see, God allowed the Holocaust to happen onto the Jew. Okay? God allowed it. It was a judgment upon his people. And they went so far until God said finally, okay, that's enough. Okay? So this is another incident where God our Father said that he feared something. But what did he fear? The wrath of the enemy. That they would be too brutal unto the apple of his eye. And you think about that. During the time of Jacob's trouble, by the way, 
It's going to get so bad during the time of Jacob's trouble that unless the Lord had shortened the, the days, no flesh would be saved. Because the Lord delighteth in mercy. See, God's mercy is his grace. Okay? Do, you, do we understand that so far? Yes? But now let's go to what obviously many of you were thinking about still. Okay? God was manifest in the flesh. Right? Jesus Christ is God the Father. Some of you might be th uh, thinking, well, it says countless in the scriptures that God is not a man like we are. And you are right. Go to Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23. One verse. Verse 19. Okay. Numbers 23. Verse 19. God is not a man, comma, that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent, semicolon, continuing the train of thought within the sentence, okay? He hath said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Now, now look real closely at that verse, okay? Look very closely at it. God is not a man that he should lie. God cannot lie. Neither can God sin. Okay, very quickly, hold your place here. Hold your place very quickly. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Not the concordance, Brad. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Where was that? Verse 5. And ye know... 1 John 3, verse 5, just one verse. And ye know, who is the ye? Those of us who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of truth. And ye know that he, our Lord Jesus Christ, was manifested to take away our sins, semicolon, continuing the train of thought in the sentence, and in him is no sin. Hinge that in him is no sin. Go back to Deuteronomy, uh, Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Lying is a sin, obviously. God cannot sin. Some people out there say that, well, God uh, had to have the option to sin or else he wouldn't be. Able That's nonsense. That's nonsense. God cannot sin. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh, could not sin. He was tempted to, but he could not sin. It's not that he had the uh, that he could. God is holy. God is perfect. God cannot sin. Re re remember this as we continue in this. Remember that. Okay? Remember that. But, looking at verse 19 again. God is not a man that he should lie. Okay, obviously. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Now these, these people who uh, dispute scriptural repentance, brokenness and contrition, okay? They like to jump over that and go just to the right to believing, okay, whatever. Um, they say, they make up arguments like, what, God had to repent? Look at this verse, okay? Look at the verse, dear friend. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent, semicolon, hath he said, and shall he not do it? When God says something, okay, okay? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Now, there are times within the scriptures where God 
changed his mind because, perfect example, look at the, what happened in the book of Jonah. He saw their works, what they did, and he repented of the evil at that time that he was going to do unto the people of Nineveh, okay? Because he saw that they repented of what they did. So he repented, changed his mind. Remember, repentance and repent is defined in, with, in the context in which it appears, okay? You have to remember that, okay? So here in verse 19, God cannot lie. And when he says something in this, right here, look at the verse, don't look at me, look at the verse. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Those of you who are of the church and the living God, and literally battle with your sin. The scriptures say that you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Is God a liar? No. So we see, God cannot lie. In him is no sin. Remember that. Remember that as we continue. Okay, it's going to be important later on within this video. Okay, now go to 1 Samuel. Go to 1 Samuel 15, verses 28 on to verse 29. 1 Samuel 15, verses 28 on to verse 29. And Samuel said unto him, King Saul, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou, King David, a man after God's own heart. And also the capital S, strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. Okay, King David, the son of David, the king of the Jews. Get it? Okay? Get it? You, you get this, okay? Also, and also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. For he is not a man that he should repent. Okay? Okay? Again, like I said, God repented of what he was going to do at that time to the people of Nineveh, or Nineveh, excuse me, in the book of Jonah, because they repented of their wickedness at that time. But obviously, a little time later, the, the people of Nineveh's repentance didn't stick. Okay? But when God saw their works, what they did, he's like, okay, I'll spare you for now. Okay? But right here it says that he should not, that uh, for he is not a man that he should repent. Okay? Okay? He said that King David was going to be on the throne. And our Lord Jesus Christ is referred to by the Jews as the son of David, referring on to his kingship, the kingdom of heaven, okay, where he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years, okay? Okay? Now, go to Job. Go to Job. This is important. This is important. We have to go through this, okay? We have to go through this. Go to Job chapter 9. Job chapter 9, verses... 32 on to verse 35. And right away, Job chapter 9, verses 32 on to verse 35. For he is not, for he is not a man as I am. This is Job talking about God. That I should answer him. And we should come together in judgment. Neither is there any daysman betwixt us that might lay his hand upon us both. Let him take his rod away from me, and let, and let not his fear terrify me. Then would I speak and not fear him. But, semicolon, but it is not so with me. Look at that verse, verse 32. 
for he is not a man as I am, as I am. But yet, God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Oh, let's go to Psalm 50. And here is the, here is the malady, if you will, for so many. Here's the malady. Here, is, here it is for so many. Psalm 50, verses 16 on to verse 21. Psalm 50, verses 16 on to verse 21. I beg your pardon, brother. Excuse me. Ah. Apple cider vinegar. Eh. Beg your pardon. Psalm 50, verses 16 on to verse 21. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. When thou sawest thief, and the thief cometh not to do what? But to kill and to destroy, right? When thou sawest the thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, Thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself, making God into your own image of what you personally think, not what the scriptures clearly tell us. And that is the problem with so many. They want a God who judges nothing, who is okay with a little sin here, a little sin there. A God who is for blending everything together, and not a God of distinction nor separation. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. That is the biggest malady of today. The church buildings, the hirelings, the easy believism heretics, the Calvinists. Easy believism uh, as far as evil is right here. Calvinism, uh, right there. Right there. They make a God of their own image. And that's the problem. That's the problem. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. One verse. One verse. For I am the Lord. Oh, Malachi 3, verse 6. Sorry. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Now, people who are not of the church of the living God, those who just like to cause debate and strife, whose sole purpose in life is to trip up those who are of the church of the living God, to take them off into directions to get their attention away from what they need to have their attention on. 
So, well, you guys say that God repents when he changes his mind. You know, brethren, remember, with some of these people, you, you, there's no point in even giving them the time of day. <laughs> people want the truth. They can find the truth. He's not that far to find. And our Lord Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? Now, go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, we will be reading verses 13 on to verse 17. James chapter 1, verses 13 on to verse 17. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. I've already done a video about why did God tempt Abraham, explaining that whole thing. Okay? Okay? So, go find that. Go find that. If I can remember, I'll link it in this video. Okay? But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived... It bringeth forth sin. Conceive. Lust births something in you. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? <clears throat> Verse 15 again. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. The wages of sin is death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the capital F, Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So God cannot be tempted with evil. God cannot sin. In him is no sin. Okay? Okay? But yet, it says, in that God feared, in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. What is that referring to specifically? Now, we went through all this to demonstrate unto you two things. Jesus Christ is God the Father, God manifest in the flesh. There is one God, consisting of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? The Holy Ghost is the spirit. God the Father is the soul. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, is the body. There's one God, and the Lord is that spirit, okay? Okay. There are some out there who say things like, well, God the Father and Jesus, yeah, but the Holy Ghost, he's here present. That, <laughs> that is such, oh. The Lord is that spirit, dear friend. See what kind of mess Trinitarianism is such a mess, such a mess. But what is that referring to in the book of Hebrews? Okay. Jesus Christ is God the Father. God cannot sin. In him is no sin. Okay. Go to, let's go to Luke. Let's look at Luke. Okay, Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. We will be reading verses 39 on to verse 49. Okay, Luke chapter 22, verses 39 on to verse 49. This is in the Garden of Gethsemane, of Gethsemane, excuse me, the agony that he was in. And he came out 
and went, and as he was wont, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the, at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared on, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Very quickly about verse 44, I have heard it said that there are, um, that people believe that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was actually bleeding uh, sweat. And apparently there is some kind of medical condition where someone can get so freaked out or something like that, that the capillaries up here burst because of whatever um, stress or whatever, and that they will bleed sweat. Uh, personally, I don't believe personally that that is what happened unto our Lord. When I see this, and his sweat was as it were, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. If any of you have worked outside on a very humid day in the summertime, especially up here in the Midwest, because in, in like Arizona, it's a dry heat, right? <laughs> but um, when it gets up to 100 degrees up here and the humidity is so thick that you can cut it with a knife. And if any of you have worked amongst trees handling chainsaws, I was a caretaker one uh, at one time in my life, cutting grass, weed whacking, picking flowers and thistles out of the field, cutting down trees myself for a wealthy Jewish man, okay? I was a caretaker. You can be working outside so hard on a very humid day, your sweat will be as if it were drops of blood uh, dripping down from your head, okay? That is just me. Uh, this is not something to really, um, you know, I'm just putting that out there for you on verse 44. I believe that he was sweating so profusely that his sweat were as it were like drops of blood, not that it was actual blood. Could it have been actual blood? Maybe. That is what I believe it, that it was like drops of blood. But enough said on that. Verse 45. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping with sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them, and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they, when they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? Okay. So we see that our Lord Jesus Christ was in agony right here. So much that he was sweating like crazy at the very least. Okay? Okay? Verse 42, Father, speaking to himself, okay? The soul of the Godhead, okay? Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. Let's go now to Matthew chapter 26. Okay. This is also in uh, Mark chapter 14. We're not going to look at that. We're going to go now to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 on to verse 46. Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 on to verse 46. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. 
and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. My soul sorrowful. Sorrowful. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Uh, for you coadjutors and Catholics out there, um, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Let's continue. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now. And take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And he is, of course, talking about Judas Iscariot. Now, Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? soul of the Godhead, and his soul is sorrowful, okay? God cannot sin. And the other incident where it says God feared something was the enemy overdoing it on his people, just like the Catholic Eustache, because they would exalt themselves as if the Lord had not allowed them to do so onto the apple of his eye. Remember, uh, for those of us of the Church of the Living God, the ground and pillar of truth, Satan cannot do anything unto you without the Lord's permission to do so. Do you understand? Okay? You have to remember that. Okay? But where it says again in Deuteronomy that he feared something, it was that he feared that they would go crazy and not attribute it and not be knowing or whatever that it was God that allowed them to do that. Remember, I kill, I wound, I make alive. Okay? You read Deuteronomy chapter 32 uh, on your own time. Okay? The Lord does all these things. There is nothing that happens outside of our Lord's will or outside of his knowledge. Okay? Who really is in control? You have to remember, dear friend. Okay? You have to remember. But see... God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? There are those out there who say, God doesn't know anything about what we're going through. How does God know what I, what I feel? Now, very quickly, and I'm going to be as reverent with this as possible because uh, reverent is his name, holy and reverend, is his name, the Lord Jesus Christ. God became a man. But you know the difference between us and God the Father, obviously? In him is no sin. God could not be tempted with evil. God can't sin. You and I, dear friend, 
We sin. We sin every day. I don't sin every day, Brad. Well, guess what? You just did. See, sin is so enormous. A thought can be a sin. Okay? But there again, where sin abound, grace also abound. Okay? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Okay? Sin is great, but our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is greater. Okay? God could not sin. But God manifest in the flesh. Now, I'm, reverend is his name, our Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ on the earth. He sweat. He ate food. He had to go to the bathroom. As far as we know, growing up, he might have had pimples. Okay? As far as we know, God the Father might have had bad breath. God the Father might have had body odor, foot odor. Okay? He hungered. Okay? He was tired. He slept. Okay? And in that he feared. Okay? In that he feared. God the Father, as man, knew what was coming. Now, God the Father, the soul of the Godhead, did not feel the whips, the beatings, the plucking of the beard, the pulling of the hair, the crown of thorns and all of that. He, the soul, God the Father, the soul of the Godhead did not feel that. But you know what? Jesus Christ, God our Father, he felt all that. He felt the buffeting. He felt the pulling of his beard out. He felt the whips. He felt every single thing. He felt all that. And that anxiety, that, you know, <laughs> this is what I'm going to have to go through. You read Isaiah chapter 53 sometime. You go ahead. You go and read Isaiah chapter 53. Start in Isaiah chapter 52, where it says his visage was so marred and that above any man. You couldn't even tell it was a man because they beat him so badly. And I would imagine that there, some of his wounds were gangrenous. The crown of thorns on his head, the nails through his hands and through his feet. He felt every single lash, every single strike. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, felt that. So you see, in that, God knows exactly what you're going through. Our Lord Jesus Christ said of himself, the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. Well, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, was walking around on the earth, dear friend. He was homeless. And then you got guys like uh, Benny Hinn and all these nut jobs telling you that God wants to bless you and that you live in prosperity and have the best of all that. When God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, had nowhere to lay his head. Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. So you see, dear friend, in that he feared. He feared. Why? Because, number one, he knew what was coming. 
Number two, God, the Father, can identify with every single little thing that you're going through. Everything. How could God uh, feel what I'm going through when I might lose everything? He didn't have a place to lay his head on the earth when he was here at his first coming. Look at what he was going to go through on the cross to make atonement, the perfect atonement for sin. And there are those of you who come to that, who come and want to come to the Lord in your self-righteousness and want to skip over scriptural repentance, brokenness, and contrition and just skip all over that and go to right to believe. How dare you? How dare you? But see, as a man, God the Father knows every single thing that you're going through. You can be sitting up in you can be sitting there on your couch, racked with pain, sleep deprived. God the Father knows exactly what it is you're feeling. Because he's been there. I personally believe that there wasn't a joint, a place on the body of our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross that wasn't racked with pain. Naked on the cross. Stripped of everything. Impaled. Because of what I had done. Because of what you had done. He went, through, he went through all that. And he knows what you're going through. Now, go, go back now to Hebrews chapter 7. Uh, Hebrews chapter 5. Go back now to Hebrews chapter 5. Okay? Go back there. Come on. We're going to read this whole chapter again. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifice for sins, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by, and by reason hereof, he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, there was no sin in him. Okay? Let's continue. He couldn't sin. It's impossible. God can't sin. Okay? Let's continue. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared, which we already looked at. Though he were a son, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Did the Lord need to learn obedience? As if he didn't know what obedience is? No but to learn obedience as to experience what it is to be obedient unto what God calls you and I unto. Do you get it? This is all about a relationship, dear people. The relationship. God the Father 
who created heaven and earth, you, me, everything out there, wants to have a personal relationship with you. Do you understand? God so loved, past tense, that he gave, past tense, the love of God is at Calvary. You want God's love? You got to go to Calvary on his terms, not your own. And if you are a thief, and the thief cometh not what to do what? To kill and to destroy. A thief and a robber goeth up some other way instead of through the door. God's love is not for you unless you come to him on his terms. See. But let's continue here in Hebrews. And being, verse 9, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Oh, beg your pardon. Excuse me. For when the time, for, for when, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of, uh, that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Verse 14 is very imperative. Look, someone in the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who is only three years of age in the Lord, the Lord can do many things. The Lord can give unto those who are babes many things. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You still have to go through some things. You still have to experience some things. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, can do anything. Amen. And he could open the floodgates of the fear of the Lord, which is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Yes. But unless you're living your faith by practice, according to the scriptures, there are still some things that some of you are missing out on. Okay? There isn't one of the church of the living God out there who knows every single thing. God forbid. But see, the longer you walk with our Lord, the more that you will go through. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Suffering. Humility, betrayal, hunger, loneliness, heartbreak. Are you, are you getting the point? Now, now, go to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. See, we have 
nothing in common with the Lord Jesus Christ in this aspect. God cannot sin. But God can identify with us with fear because of going through what he was going to go through on the cross. Heartbreak. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how would I gather thee as a, a chicken, her brood? But ye would not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God as man. His feelings were hurt. See, God can identify with us. But remember, dear friend, like I told you, hinge this, in him is no sin. Sin was condemned in the flesh. You read Romans chapter 8 sometime, okay? And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. You and I, who are made in the image of God, spirit, soul, and body, okay? As long as our spirit and soul are within this body, we're going to sin. And sin is so subtle. It could be a thought. It could be a word. Obviously, it could be an action. But see, greater is he who is in you if you are saved and born again, sealed until the day of redemption. And the Lord Jesus Christ is that spirit. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And who is in the world? Uh, that be the prince of the power of the air, Satan. Go to John chapter 13, verses 1 under verse 17. John chapter 13, verses 1 under verse 17. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of the world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Beg your pardon, brethren, excuse me. Oh, beg your pardon. Let's continue. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Shimon's son, to betray, to betray him, Sop, son of perdition. Satan entered into him after he received the Sop. Let's continue. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. He riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Hold on. God the Father washing the feet of the disciples. Stinking, crusty, dirty, rotten feet. Get, get that. Okay? Get that. You know, at the wedding, at my wedding, when uh, the Lord uh, united my wife and I as husband and wife, I washed my wife's feet. Washing one another's feet. Serving others. You see, some of you out there are just so selfish, aren't you? Why is that? Holding your place here. Hold your place there. We're going to read verse 6 in John 13. Hold your place there. Go back to Psalms 50. Go back to Psalm 50. Excuse me. Psalm 50. Verse 21. 
These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. But I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. God's gone through what we've, we go through. But see, in him was no sin. That's why it is a satanic heresy for those who ta uh, teach you to imitate Christ. Guess what? You can't imitate Christ. That's why Paul is our example, especially in this dispensation. Okay, to the Jew first and also to the, uh, to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile, okay? We are to follow the example of Paul on how to follow Christ, okay? Because Jesus Christ is God the Father who never sinned, who could not sin. And when you got people out there talking about imitating Christ, trying to be sinless, good luck with that. I also have a video on that, uh, Are We Little Christs, an older video. Go find it. I, 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 I'll try to remember to put the links in the description box. I'm pretty bad at that. But anyway, go back to John 13. Picking up at verse 6. Now look at this. Good old Pope Peter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then cometh he to Shimon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? See, they were looking forward to the cross all the way back in Genesis. Um, if Pope Peter had known that, if he was looking forward to the cross, he would have been ecstatic. Again, more proof that they weren't looking forward to the cross from the very beginning up onto this point. That's a stupid argument, by the way. Stupid. Let's continue. Jesus, uh, verse 7. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do, thou knowest not now but thou shalt know hereafter. And look at what Peter says. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. See, thinking that he was being humble, but having pride. Remember, it was Peter who said, Though all the world deny thee, yet I won't. And what happened? He denied the Lord three times, and that atrociously. And as it is written in the book of Luke, the Lord looked upon Peter. To this day, going on 13 years of the Church of the Living God, that, that still to this day brings a tear to my eye. The Lord will warn you. Excuse me. And if you take heed according to his word, but if you don't, I told you so. Be careful on the type of humility that is actually nothing more than self-glorification. Beware of those who are of such. Let's continue. Verse 8. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Verse 9, Shimon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. It's pretty brazen of uh, Shimon Peter to say, isn't it? But look at how our Lord answers. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean. At all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, 
Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. For so I am. <laughs> Note the I am's, especially in the book of John, that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, utters. Verily, I say unto thee, before Abraham was, I am. Okay? Note the I am's in the book of John. Let's continue. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Oh, beg your pardon. Excuse me. I'm sorry. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Right here, he's kicking, imitating himself. Look at the verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. See, right there, he's kicking those who say you got to imitate Christ. Jesus Christ was sinless, is sinless, cannot sin. That is why it is heresy to say, imitate Christ. It says right here on that. For, verse 15, for I have given you an example. That ye should do as I have done to you. But in verse 16, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. And remember in Psalm 50, that you made, uh, you, thou thoughtest that I was such a one altogether as yourself. Yeah, you see the danger? Let's continue. The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that sent, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. An example. An example. Paul is our example for today. And you read Romans chapter 7. Paul, the greatest of the church of the living God ever, sinned. I personally believe that Paul's sin that he sinned, that he struggled with, was pride. He was given a thorn in the flesh to keep him from his pride. But we also see that in the book of Acts, uh, the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that spirit, warned him. It's like, maybe you shouldn't go to Jerusalem. The Lord might have had a different way for him to go instead of at that time, but he went anyway. And of course, the Lord's like, don't worry, I'm with you. You're going to testify at Rome also, okay? But I believe, and I believe it's very provable within the scriptures, that Paul's sin was pride. His biggest sin that he struggled with was pride, okay? Hence, hence today, Paul is our example on how to follow Christ. A sinner who is chief. Remember, Paul said of himself that he, was, he is a sinner who is chief. But Christ, God the Father, couldn't sin. But yet he gave an example on how to serve others. Do you get it? And in that he feared, okay? In that he feared, he can relate to you, dear friend, in every single solitary aspect of your life. Some of you might be saying, well, what about guilt, Brad? What about guilt? Uh, is not guilt sorrow? 
It's not guilt, fear. Dear young man, praise the Lord for your guilt. Praise the Lord for your shame. Amen. Amen. That sorrow, that sorrow. But what do you do with that sorrow? See. Go to First Peter. Go to First Peter. First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one, verses thirteen on the verse twenty five. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Of uh, First Peter chapter one, verses thirteen on the verse twenty five. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Remember in Hebrews chapter 5, it talked about Learned obedience. <laughs> God, Father, our Father didn't need to learn it because he wasn't obedient, but what it would be like for us to be obedient. He knew what it was like already, but he went through it as one of his own. Do you get it? Do you get it? Let's continue. But as he which hath called you is holy, separate than, other than, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work past the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. In him was no sin. In him was no sin. Remember I told you to hinge that? And see, when you think that the Lord is such a one as yourself, and also thinking that you can imitate him being like unto Christ, what does that mean? Trying to be sinless. Again, whenever you see anything about imitating Christ or someone, well, I'm trying to imitate Christ, you're trying to be God. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, I will be like the Most High. Imitate, by the way, does not appear in the authorized version of the scriptures. Find it. Now let's continue. Big part. Verse 20. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Foreordained. The way of the cross was chosen from the beginning of the world. All the way back in Genesis chapter 3. Okay? But it wasn't revealed until much later. Okay? Again, they were not looking forward to the cross all the way back in Genesis. That's stupid. Okay? We also looked at another occurrence of that in John 13 
with Peter. Okay? Again, it was, Peter was used twice. Get thee behind me, Satan. He's like, Lord, this, this you know, going to the cross. No, that, that, no, you're not going to do that. Then the Lord said, uh, get thee behind me, Satan. Okay? And again, you'll never wash my feet. Okay? You see? Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 21. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God? Seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the capital S spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Pure heart fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. That's a lowercase w. The word of God. What is he we're making reference to? The scriptures. <clears throat> For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower fadeth away. And the, and the flower thereof falleth away. Beg your pardon. But the word of the Lord, the scriptures, endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Look at verse 24. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. At any given moment, you could die. It is God's merciful grace that he gives you breath today. Now, how many of us take that for granted? You're not promised tomorrow. At any given moment, you could have a heart attack. You could have a stroke. You could be walking your dog and get hit by a car. At any given moment, you could die. And guess what? You are going to die. We all die. It is appointed, on, for, uh, appointed to men to die once and after that the judgment. I just paraphrased that. Beg your pardon. Okay. What is it with some of you? What is it with some of you who don't want the Lord to deal with your self-righteousness? Remember when you had that ailment of yours and you were close to dying, at least you said, and there were those who actually wept for you? But yet you're alive. And yet, are still lost. <laughs> what is it with some of you? And we, and we know. We know. We do know. Because we have the scriptures. But I, I, I just can't... I, I, personally, I, I mean, we, like I said... We, we, know, we know the answer to that query. Because men are lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. But your pride is going to put you in hell. I don't get it. I, 
I mean, we, we get it because it's written for us in the scriptures, but man. Verse 17. And if ye call on the Father with who, without respect of persons, judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. The fear of the Lord. Now go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 on to verse 25. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin. That's something we can't do. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Okay? Note the distinction. Who did no sin? Because Jesus Christ is God the Father. God cannot sin. But neither was guile found in his mouth. Do you speak guile much? Brother, sister. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. Someone calls you names. Want to shout back names at them. Again, remember, if you fight fire with fire, what wins? Fire wins ultimately, doesn't it? Okay? When he suffered, he threatened not. Oh, you better not touch the Lord's anointed. I'm a child of God. You touch me, judgment's coming on your house. But committed himself. To him that judgeth righteously. Are you seeing this? Is it is it clicking? Is it clicking? I hope so. Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. If you make it through this whole video, refresh yourself and read Isaiah chapter 53. Please. Do you good. Okay? For ye were as sheep going astray, but now, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. An example. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, knows what it is to fear, as we fear. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He knows what we are going through. He knows what it is like. He knows what it is we fear. He knows what it is to fear as we fear. See, not that God the Father is afraid of anything, but see, God the Father, who made heaven and earth, can relate to you in your infirmity, in your fear, in your sorrow. And what it is, feels like to be betrayed, to be lied to, to be homeless, to suffer need, to be rejected by those of your own. Hmm. Look at verse 23. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. For an example. What does it say that uh, vengeance is mine, I will repay? Go to Romans chapter 12. Go to Romans chapter 12. Ah, take part. Romans chapter 12. 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Look, we all sin. And you need to check yourself if you are one of those who says, well, I don't sin every day. Okay, then what? You are like Christ for a day? <laughs> okay? We sin every day. But God's grace is there. If we confess our sins, he is just and faithful to forgive us our sins. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Okay? But if you have sin in your life that is ruling over you, that you are a servant unto, and you are giving power onto that sin, What happens when the Lord gives you a little check? What do you do with it? Hmm? That's me getting into something that's coming here in the future that's going to be really, really big. But um, are you going to seek the Lord until there's respite and then continue on as if nothing happened? We sin every day, dear friend. We sin every day. Whether it's that big or <laughs> that big. Okay? Okay? But if you have something in your life that you are clinging on to that is sin, and you know it, What happens when the Lord gives you a check? What, what happens when he gives you a check and you're allowed to live? How much more do you need to see? How much more do you need to hear? How much more do you need to go through to get it through the head? We should absolutely be terrified of sin. Amen and amen. Amen. But how long are you going to let that sin rule over you? By you giving it its power. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we many, being many are one body in Christ, and every one member is one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Beg your pardon. He that ruleth with diligence, he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. 
Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Abhor is extreme hatred. Abhor, hate that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. When my mother died, I did a lot of that, holding the scriptures to my heart. When um, my brother's sister, our sister, went home to be with the Lord, I did a lot of that, holding the scriptures to my heart in prayer for him. When my brother suffers every single day and can't find relief, I hold the scriptures to my heart. That's just me. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Remember washing the feet? Ah, you got that, didn't you? Let's continue. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Yes, brother, continue to be instant in prayer. Let's pray about it. Right then and there. Amen. Distributing to the greed of the saints. <clears throat> Distributing to the necessity of saints. Of saints, excuse me. Necessity of saints. Given the hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. If you know of a brother who is in a low state right now, And you put yourself up here thinking yourself better because you're not dealing with or struggling with what he's going through. Lord have mercy on you and the Lord rebuke you. Okay? Like I said, still got things to go through. You understand God's mercy. Because he saved us. Saved me. Saved you. But long suffering, grace, compassion. For those who are of the church of the living God. And even unto the ones who would kill you. Be not wise in your own conceits. Verse 17. Recompense with an S. A verb. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you. Live peaceably with all men. And it says, recompense no, to no man evil for evil. But then it says, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you. You know, I, there are some of you out there who I used to talk to who I don't 
speak too much anymore. I haven't forgotten you. And I still pray for you. For many of you. I can't imagine what it must be like to have your own, under your own roof, the one who is to be of your own flesh to be your enemy. But there again, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay Seth the Lord. Put your trust on, the, on him. Commit yourself unto him. Do you see? Do you see? Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. You enemies out there. You enemies out there of our Lord. You can't kill Christ, so you'll kill his messengers. I know if you'd meet me, you'd bash my head and run me over. I know that. I know that. And honestly, if all of a sudden you were to appear, I just smile because I know that you would be here to kill me. I know that. Lord, forgive them. For they know what they do. <laughs> How long are you going to play around? You, you, you think you're going to live your entire life hardened onto the Lord Jesus Christ, then on your deathbed, you're going to have brokenness and contrition and then go and be... Is that possible? The minute we say it's not, then you're putting God into a category. Is it possible? Yeah, okay. Anything is possible with God, okay? Is it probable? Is it likely to happen? I doubt it. I doubt it. Because remember, what is God not going to do? What is Satan not going to do? You get the point. You get the point. And coming to the Lord broken, contrite. Okay? He has given us an example for those who are of his bones and of his flesh. Go to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. See, you mess around, you mess around, you mess around. You have your belief. You have your faith in your faith. See, you don't have faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. See, that is why you easy believism devils are so evil. You have faith on, in your faith. 
You do not have faith on Christ. Hence, you are saved by your work. We, you are not saved by a prayer, okay? You're not. A prayer doesn't save you. Nor, nor less is saying, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, proves you are of the church of the living God. It's an issue of the heart. And if you have self-righteousness lodged in there, and thinking you're a good person because God loves you. So instead of having faith on Christ, you have faith in your faith. That is exactly what the law of attraction is. That is exactly what Mary Baker Eddy taught. That's what Catholics teach because you are to have faith in the sacraments. Luke chapter, uh, Mark chapter 9, verses 43 on verse 50. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Being in hell, the lake of fire, is a collective sense, dear brother. Okay? God's mercy is his grace. Okay? You know who you are. God's mercy is his grace. Okay? God's grace is mercy. Okay? But everybody's going to be together in hell. Okay? Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye, than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. The worm dieth not, referring unto their soul, and the fire is not quenched. Bullinger taught soul annihilationism. The worm dieth not, referring unto the soul. I hope you, the, of those of you who have chosen the devil and gone past that point of no return, I hope every single one of you have the best life you can right now. I, I truly do. I truly do. For every one shall be salted with fire. And every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good. Remember, we are likened unto salt. Salt burns and preserves. Salt is good, despite what the Jesuit doctors tell you. But if the salt have lost its saltiness, wherewith will, it, will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. Now, it says here, if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. He's not talking literally. Okay? What is he talking about? You're of the church of the living God. If you're going places where you shouldn't, stop it. Cut it off. Don't go places that you know you shouldn't. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. 
I shall set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the, wor the work of those that turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. Pornography. Hollywood movies. Music videos. Pluck it out. Don't set these things before your eyes. But commit yourself unto who? The Lord Jesus Christ, our faithful creator. And of course, <clears throat> the hand, the hand, I kind of did it backwards, excuse me, out of order in the text there, but your hand, your hands are touching things that they shouldn't. Cut it off. You know, going online, looking at things to set before your eyes. Touching a woman who isn't yours. And use your imagination on other things like that. Cut them off. Okay? And serve the Lord. Okay? Because remember, in his mouth was no guile. He was tempted like us. But he sinned not because God can't sin. God can't sin. But on that, okay, he also has given us an example on what to do when tempted, didn't he? Because see, if your hand tempt thee, your eye tempt thee, your foot, cut them off. Okay? But remember now, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, can't sin. He can't be tempted. Go to Matthew chapter 4. Go to Matthew chapter 4. He gave us the antidote on how to resist the devil and he will flee from you. He gave us how to do it. And it's never... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. It's never, I rebuke you, Satan. No. Oh. Good luck with that. Um, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. You start taking upon yourself as the sons of Sceva to rebuke devils in your own name. Or I rebuke you in the name of Jesus whom Paul... Yeah. The Lord rebuke you. Okay. But go to Matthew chapter 4. Uh, what was it? Yeah. Matthew chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 11. What do you do in, tempt in temptation? Well, he gave us an example, right? Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 11. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit, capital S, into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Okay? And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hunger. 40 days and 40 nights without anything to eat. Could you imagine that God the Father was weak? And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And he answered and said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written. Look what Satan does. 
He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, which Satan was doing. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Hold your place there. Go to Luke. Go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Verses 6 on to verse 7. Luke chapter 4, verse 6 on to verse 7, okay? Look at verse 9. And he saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Luke chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And what did we read in Psalm 50? Huh? Go, come on. Come on. Psalm 50. What did we read there? Verse 21. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself. But I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. Back in Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. It is written. It is written. It is written. God does not want you going through life without the authority of the scripture. God is a spirit. Beg your pardon. Distinction. How are you to know who is and what is and what's God want? What's God's desire for you? It is written. It is written. It is written. Because remember, dear friend, remember what it says in 2 Corinthians. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. <clears throat> Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. And remember what it says in Romans chapter 12, which we already read. Romans chapter 12, the very first verse. Oh no, uh, uh, verse 2, excuse me. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove... What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Prove it to yourself by abstaining from these things or also because verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Yeah. How is that sin that you're clinging to and been giving all this power onto? How does that help your testimony as an ambassador for Christ? It 
as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Right here. Here it is. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In him. As I, as I reckon, um, and those of you who do your own homework, the modern Bible perversions, you know, the, the Bibles um, pervert this and per, per, uh, um, remove in and put by, meaning what? Our righteousness of, is of God, not our own. They mess with this to say that we have our own righteousness. See? And when you are having faith in your faith, that it is your faith that saves you and not the Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father himself, you have your own righteousness, don't you? Or if you think you are one of the elect, you have your own righteousness, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Go to 1 Peter chapter 2. Again, 1 Peter chapter 2. Verses 11 and 12. First Peter, chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Dearly beloved, and remember what we read in Mark? Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. It is very important that you fashion your life around the scriptures. And if your hand offend thee, Cut it off. If your eye offend thee, pluck it out. If your feet offend thee, whack them off. To be not like the world. To abstain from these things, which is your reasonable service. And when Satan comes to tempt you, it is written. It is written. It is written. Because remember, dear brethren, 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 5. <clears throat> remember, in that he feared, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, has gone through every single thing that you have, will, ever go through. He has felt what you have felt. Okay? Accept that guilt. Why? Because he can't sin. But guilt and shame are what? Sorrow. And he said that now my soul is filled with is exceedingly sorrowful. And God was sorry that he had made man on the earth an aspect of repentance. And see, this is why I personally detest and abhor easy believism because they say uh, it's from going from unbelief to belief. There's no sorrow in that.
verse uh, chapter uh, at First Timothy six verses one on verse five. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and His doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, See, a lot before the death, burial, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, a lot of what Jesus said before the crucifixion is for our instruction in righteousness. You have to remember, doctrinally, it was still under the law. Okay? It was still under the law. He was offering the kingdom of heaven onto the Jewish people. Okay? A lot of what Christ said before the crucifixion is instruction and in righteousness for us today. That's why Paul refers to them as wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Verse 4, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such, withdraw thyself. Well, Brad, you've made a big stink about Christian and scriptures and Yes. You are not in sin if you want to refer to yourself as a Christian. I've made that plain. Okay? I personally do not refer to myself or any of the brethren as such. You are not in sin if you refer to the scriptures as the Bible. You're not. I do not. I do not, okay? But see, distinction, especially in this time, especially in this time, God is a God of distinction. And I believe that we ought to be more distinct. Okay? But the wholesome words, he gave us an example. And Paul is our example for today. Okay. In that he feared, he feared for our benefit that when we pray unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, he knows exactly what we're going through. Number one, he can see everything. But number two, he's been there, but he's never sinned. But see, he knows that we are that we cannot not sin. Okay? We can't be sinless in this life. And again, whether you want to admit it or not, you do sin every day. If you don't sin every day, then that means for one day you are just like God. Really? <laughs> really? Good luck with that, friend. Good luck with that, friend. And of course, let's finish this up. 2 Timothy chapter 2.15. Remember the example our Lord gave us of how to deal with Satan? It is written. It is written. It is written. Second Timothy chapter two, 
Verse 15. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Verse 16. But shun profane and vain battlings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And of course, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17. Even wholesome words. Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. But see, God rightly divide the word of truth. See. For reproof, you can learn and be reproved through the examples given in the Old Testament. Especially in the Proverbs. Especially them Psalms. For correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thor thoroughly, thank you, brother, furnished unto all good works. And remember what it says in Ephesians chapter 2. See, you don't, the Lord doesn't save you. And then you just sit there on your duff. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, the works of the law. lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Remembering John chapter 13, what I have done unto you, likewise you should do unto others, because I have given you an example. And what Paul said in Romans chapter 12, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ didn't go through all that as it is in Hebrews chapter 5 for his benefit. No. He went for, through it for our benefit. That when we pray unto the Lord Jesus Christ God our Father he knows exactly what you're going through. But see he never sinned. You can't cease from sinning, even though some of you like to think you can. At least for a day, right? Eh. Eh. Good luck. So then one day, for one day, you were just like Christ. Sinless. Brother asked me, it's like, I don't, asked me, you don't sin every day. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> no. I said it in jest. <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I said it in jest. Yeah, I do sin every day. As did Paul. In that he feared that he learned obedience. Not that the Lord needed to learn what obedience was, but what it was for us to go through it as a man, for our benefit, not for his own. What does God the Father have anything to fear? What does the Lord have to fear of anything, right? Nothing. But he went through that for our benefit so that when we pray unto him, he knows exactly every nook and cranny to begin with, but he's been there, done that. See, that's what that means. That's what that means. That's going to be it for this video. 
Uh, there are more videos coming. But like I said, there were some health issues that uh, I'm dealing with and that needed to be dealt with straightway. And thank you to all of you who have prayed for that. Thank you. Thank you. And again, thank you to every single one of you who have helped us. Without you, we would have nothing. Without the Lord. Praise the Lord. And may he grant you a recompense with the sea. Every single one of you, your kindness and mercy. Okay. It's going to be it for this video. Thank you, brethren, Church of the Living God. I love you, and my wife loves you too. And we do pray for so many of you. So many of you. Thanks for watching if you do. Bye-bye.